Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Site Improve Workshop. To go over the agenda for this workshop, we'll first do a brief overview as to what Site Improve is, then we'll dive deeper into a few different sections of Site Improve, the first of which will be accessibility, which I'm sure is what a lot of us think about when we think of Site Improve. Then we'll move on to broken links, misspellings, and then policies. Before we begin the review with some of the key points of the content covered today, I'll do a brief demo of the different tasks that we'll talk about in Site Improve, as well as give you all an opportunity to practice using Site Improve and navigating the different sections that we're going to talk about today. Of course, if you have any questions about the content covered in the presentation, please feel free to email us at webservices at georgetown.edu. All right, so let's first talk about what Site Improve is. Site Improve is a quality assurance and accessibility tool that we have available for all Georgetown University sites. The quality assurance part of Site Improve tracks issues like content quality, content freshness, user experience, and the accessibility part of Site Improve can help us make sure our sites are in compliance with the web content accessibility guidelines. So to give some examples, Site Improve can help you track issues like empty alternative text on images, generic link text, so this is going to be things like click here or read now, improper headings, and broken links and misspellings. And there are a few different roles in Site Improve I wanted to go over. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. The most common role is going to be read only. And with this level of access, you won't be able to take any actions in Site Improve, but you're still going to be able to see sections like accessibility, broken links, and misspellings. So you will still be able to go in and fix those issues that we're going to talk about today. The next role above read only is GU user. You can get this role if you've taken our Decisions and Site Improve course on Canvas, and then you pass the quiz with a score of 75% or better. Once you're a GU user, you'll still be able to see the same sections as you can like a read only user. The difference here is that you're going to be able to take actions on some of the issues. So this can be like approving a misspelled word on site proof. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Above GU user is going to be a GU site manager. And this is typically reserved for site managers and sites. And so a GU site manager can do everything that a GU user and a read-only user can with the addition of being able to create a policy. And if in the future you would like to gain access to a site in site proof, you can do so by filling out the Web Accessibility Content Editor's Access Form. And we'll go ahead and make sure you have access to the site that you listed. All right, so moving on now to accessibility. I don't want to go too in-depth into individual accessibility issues since we do have a course for that on Canvas. So I'm just going to focus on how Site Improve categorizes these issues and some ways to go about fixing them. So Site Improve uses the three web content accessibility guideline levels to prioritize and organize these different issues that you're going to be seeing. So level A is higher priority than double A, and then double A is higher priority than triple A levels. Level A issues tend to consist of issues that affect ease of website navigation and readability. So this can be something like missing alternative text and images. Double A consists of issues relating to contrast ratios and duplicate elements. And then triple A deals with sign language and audio descriptions for video and audio content. The majority of the issues that you're going to be seeing on your site and that you'll be able to fix are going to fall under level A and double A. And now I wanted to talk about the point system. And so if you haven't logged into Site Improve before, Site Improve uses a point system to help you track not only your progress on fixing these issues, but it can also help you determine which issues to tackle off first. And so I've included this little table here that gives the weights different errors and warnings have depending on the level. The order from highest weight to lowest weight is going to be level A errors, double A errors, triple A errors, then A level warnings, double A warnings, and then triple A warnings. And so now that we understand a little bit more how the point system in Site Improve works and how these different issues are being categorized, let's move on to how we can start fixing them. So one way to start fixing accessibility issues is to start prioritizing fixing your level A and double A issues first, since these are the issues that we need to resolve to be compliant with university policies. To do this, you'll need to log into Site Improve and then from the main menu, navigate to accessibility and then issues. From there, you're going to see a list of all the issues on your site that are organized by level. So 
so you'll see double A issues first, double A, and then triple A if there are any. You can also visit this section if you only feel comfortable fixing a certain issue. You can go in, click on that issue and site improve, and it'll list all the pages where that issue is located. If you're looking to rapidly increase your accessibility score, you can fix your issues by going to accessibility and then overview. From there, you'll see a section where it will list the issue and the amount of points that can be gained from fixing that issue. So if you wanna go about increasing your score fast, that would be the way to do it. If you are comfortable with fixing a variety of issues on your site, then we would recommend focusing on resolving whole pages instead of just single issues. So you can do this by going to accessibility and then pages. This way you can make sure that pages with more traffic are prioritized. Now to give a few examples of some common issues that you might see while Insight Improve, one of them is a heading is missing text. This is often done by mistake and just means that there's a heading box somewhere on a page that is empty. So to fix this, all you'll need to do is log into your site, go to that page, then either delete the empty heading or if it's appropriate, fill in the heading with text. Another fairly common issue is that an image is missing alternative text. For this issue, all you would need to do is go into WordPress, then add alternative text to that image. For the issue link is too generic, this means that your link text needs to be rewritten to give more context as to where that link is going. Another one you might see is link text is used for multiple different destinations. And so what this means is that you have two or more links with the same text that are going to different places. So it can be kind of confusing since users are expecting um, if a certain link text is the same, it's going to be going to the same place. So you wanna make sure that for different destinations, you have unique link text. For the issue should image be marked as decorative, you need to check and see if the image is decorative or if it needs alternative text added. And if you want more information on different issues that you might see in Site Improve, I would recommend reviewing the Site Improve Issues Guide. The Site Improve Issues Guide is going to list the different issues that are in Site Improve, give some context as to what they mean and how to go about fixing them. Now let's move on to broken links. And broken links can have a negative impact on a user's experience on your site, as well as on your ranking in search engines. And I'm sure we've all at some point clicked on a broken link before, so we know how frustrating it is, and we wanna make sure that we're fixing those whenever we can. To view broken links on your site, you're gonna to go to quality assurance. So this is going to be different from the accessibility section. So you'll have to navigate back to the main menu and then go to quality assurance and then links. From links, you're gonna see sections like the summary, which will give you an overview of the status of broken links on your site. Pages with broken links, which will give you a list of all the pages that have broken links on them. And then broken links, which is going to give you a list of all the broken links on your site and how many pages they're located on. So to go about fixing a broken link, it's gonna be the same process whether you're going page by page or link by link. You're gonna click on the link to the page that improved flagged. This is gonna open up a new tab showing the page and where exactly the broken link is located on that page. From there, you'll need to log into your site on WordPress, navigate to that page, and update the link. And to give an example of some different broken links you might see, you might see a broken link for an image. So this could be the case where you add an image that has since been deleted from the media library, or it could be an issue with the past migration. To fix a broken image, you're going to want to look at the page and try to get some context and understand what that image should be. Of. Then go into your media library and re upload the image. If the image was deleted from your library or you can't find the image in your media library, I would recommend going to the Georgetown Photo Shelter account and trying to see if there's an image somewhere that can replace the missing one. For broken links to PDFs, this could be caused from a previous migration or it could be the case where you link to the PDF using box and the box link is broken. If site improve is flagging the box link as broken, I would double check on your site just to make sure that the link really is broken because sometimes site improve will flag a box link as broken if access is being restricted. So if you really do have a broken link to a PDF or a document, I would look at the broken link and at the end of it, you're going to see the file name. So with that information, you can then either go into box if that's where you have your documents stored or wherever you do have those stored and get that file and then either upload it onto box if it's not already create a shareable link, and then update the broken link with that new shareable link. 
external broken links can be a little tricky at times. For external links, I would go back onto the page and reread the sentence or the paragraph that the broken link is in for context. I can determine exactly where that link was trying to go to. If I'm still having trouble after looking at the contents of the page, then I would either ask the author of the page or maybe the last person to edit the page or someone in my department to see if they remember where the link should be going to. It might be the case where the page that you were linking to is deleted. If that's the case, I would ask the author again of the page and see if they can recommend an alternative link. Of course, if you're still having trouble, you can always email us at webservices at georgetown.edu. But for external links, might be the case where people inside of your department might be a little bit more helpful just because they have more context of the page. For broken internal links, this might happen due to a past migration, or it could be the case where you link to a page on your site and that page has either since changed the URL due to a parent page change, or maybe you just changed the slug. So if it's the case where the broken link is due to a change in the parent page, it might be the case where that broken link is on 10 or 13 or 20 different pages. And it can be really tedious to go into every page and update that link. So if this is the case, you can go ahead and email us to ask if we can add in a redirect. That way you don't have to go into multiple pages and update the same link. Moving on now to misspellings, which are probably one of the easiest things to fix and site improve. And we all know that misspellings can have a negative impact on how users are viewing our site. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping up with fixing these mistakes whenever possible. To view misspellings, you're gonna go from the quality assurance section and then go to spelling. From there, you're gonna see sections like find misspellings, which will give you a list of all of the misspelled words on your site. Pages with misspellings or words to review, which is going to give you a list of all the pages on your site that have misspellings. So if you wanna focus on fixing misspellings on pages that have more traffic first, that would be the way to do so. And then you'll also find the section decision on spelling. So you might see that site improve will flag a word as misspelled when it isn't necessarily the case. And you are able to approve these misspelled words. So you do have to be at least a GU user to do this. But again, if you have words or maybe abbreviations specific to your department, you can approve those in site improve. So the decisions on the spelling page will then show history of decisions that have been made regarding spelling for that site. So it is a good idea to check in on that site once in a while, just to make sure that no words were approved by mistake. Now to fix a misspelling is similar to the process for broken links and accessibility issues. You're going to click on the URL of the page, which will open a new tab, showing you where the misspelling is located on that page. From there, you'll go into your site in WordPress, log in and fix that misspelling. Now let's talk about policies. I like to think about policies as an advanced search feature for the site. Policies can be used to help enforce style guides, catch common mistakes, and ensure a consistent user experience. When you create a policy in Site Improve, you can add rules to tell Site Improve exactly what to search and find on your site. Then Site Improve will come up with a list of matches. To give some examples of some existing policies we have on Site Improve already, we have one that searches for click here, read more, and some more generic link text. We also have policies that track different block usage on your site. So you can see where button row blocks are being used on your site, where card decks are being used, and where columns are being used. And they actually get pretty specific. So you can see if there's a button row block on your site that is centered or left aligned, or if there's a call out on your site that is in the solid style in the color GU blue. And so this can be used to ensure that consistent user experience. So you can make sure that similar blocks are being used to display similar information. You can also use policies to track when certain words or phrases are being used on your site. So this is especially helpful when you want to change the name of a program you offer or maybe the name of your department. You can create a policy to search for instances of the old name and then go ahead and update it. Now to view active policies on your site, you can go to policy and then my policies. So policies is going to be a completely different section from accessibility and quality assurance. So you'll need to navigate back to the main menu and then go to policy. From there, you're going to see a list of all the active policies on your site and also how many matches there are, if there are any. You can then click on the URL of the policy to see a list of pages where the matches were located on. 
create a policy. And if you remember, you'll have to be a GU site manager to do this. So once you are, you can go to policy, my policies, and then you'll see this button that says create policy. So go ahead and click on that button. You can then choose from different categories. So is this policy going to be used to track content? Is it going to be used to track media or documents? Once you've chosen the category, you're then going to add a name to the policy and start adding rules to tell SiteImprove exactly what it is you want it to track and find. And I'll go ahead and show you all on SiteImprove exactly what this looks like, as well as go over the previous sections like broken links, accessibility, and misspellings. This will be have an idea of how it looks. All right, so now when you're in SiteImprove and you log in and you go to the dashboard over here, this is what you're going to see. So you'll see your different scores on sections like we talked about. So you can see your quality assurance score and your accessibility score here. So now I'm first gonna go over policies. So from the dashboard over here, the menu, I'm gonna go to policy and then my policies. From here, what I'm gonna see is a list of all the active policies that are on my site. So to give an example of a policy that tracks a block, over here, you can see they're pretty specific. You can see if there is a large single button being used on your site with the outline style and the color wine red. And so if there were matches for this policy on your site, you would see them right here. And so just to show you what this would look like, you can see over here that for this policy, the click here, read more here, this found, this is going to be tracking links that have that really generic link text. You can see over here that there are four matches on this site. So if I want to see exactly which pages those matches are on, I can click over here on the policy. You can then see a line graph that tracks the history of the matches on your site. And then as you scroll down, you'll be able to see a list of all the pages that these matches are located on. So if you remember, this was for this policy over here that's tracking those generic links. So if I then click on a page, I'm going to open up the new tab. And then I can see over here that this is where that generic link text was located. And so I could then go into my site and update that link text. Now going back over here into Site Improve, going to back up and go back to my policies. I'm gonna show you what it would look like to create a policy. So again, I'm in policy, my policies. Over here at the left, I see this create policy button. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then like we talked about, it's going to show these different categories. So if I wanna track content, I would click on here. If I wanna track media, I would click here. So if you wanted to track things like file types regarding media, you would click that or maybe the size. If you wanna track um, different document types, you would click this one. But for the purposes of this example, I'm gonna go ahead and choose content. So once you're here, you'll be able to add a policy name. So for this example, I'm going to put it as though I want to change the um, name of my department. So just for example, we'll use School of Medicine. I don't think that they're going to be wanting to change their name, but just an example you can see. So over here it would be change School of Medicine name. So again, you would name the policy, however, is most intuitive to the policy that you're trying to track. And over here is where you're going to add the rules. So there's a bunch of different rules that you can add depending on what it is that you want to track. And that improve gives a description of what each rule will track. So for this purpose, since I do want to track either a name or a phrase, I am going to click content match. And so now over here, I'm going to enter exactly what it is that I want to improve track. So I want it to track where school of medicine is being used. And if I wanted this to be case sensitive, I could go ahead and click this little check right here. And then if I want, I can let the improve know if this is what I want to track it, if it's exactly School of Medicine, if it starts with it, if it ends with it, or if it contains it. So say I also want to track the abbreviation. So I can go ahead here, add another match, and I can add that abbreviation here. And if I have more instances of phrases that I want to track, I can go ahead and add that here. And same thing here, I can check if it's case sensitive or change this right here. If I want to remove a match, I can just click on this X. And if I want to delete this rule, all I have to do is click right here. 
Once you're satisfied with the policy and the rules that you've added, you would then just go ahead and click Create Policy. From there, Site Improve will have to call your site and search for matches. So it won't be immediately after you create the policy. You have to give Site Improve a little bit to actually call your site. Now let's go back and talk about what the accessibility section of Site Improve looks like. So I'm going to go back over here to main menu. Now I'm going to go over to accessibility. And when I want to start fixing accessibility issues in Site Improve, typically what I'll do is I'll look at the accessibility overview just so I get a quick overview of what the state of um, my accessibility issues are on my site. So I can see my score here. I can see a list of different issues. And if you remember, if you want to increase your score rapidly over here, you can look on the fix these issues to improve your score. They'll give you a list of issues and how many points you can gain from that issue. So you can go ahead and fix them that way. Over here, when I go to accessibility and then issues, I'll see a list of all the accessibility issues on my site. So if I only feel comfortable, for example, fixing um, an issue with no alternative text, then I could go ahead and click on that issue, go into WordPress and fix those issues that way. If I do feel comfortable fixing a variety of issues and I want to go about fixing it page by page, I would go into accessibility and then pages. And over here, it's going to give me a list of different pages that have issues on them and what kind of issues they have. So for this purposes, I'm just going to go back into issues so I can show you what it's like to resolve a specific issue. And I'm going to scroll down and, and find an issue that I feel comfortable fixing. So, for example, let's go into this issue, link text used through multiple different destinations. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. Now it's going to open up this page where it's going to show me the progress of um, how many instances of this issue has occurred over time, as well as a list of all the pages that this issue is located on. And so, over here, I'm going to give you an example of what it would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this issue, link text used for multiple different destinations. And it's going to show a list of all the pages where this issue is located on. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on a page, and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one over here. It's going to open up a new tab. And on the left, you'll be able to see a description of what the issue is, as well as how to fix it. And then over here on the actual page, Site Improve will highlight where the issue is in this red box. I can see here that the two link texts that are the same are is the Georgetown Management System, the GMS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this over here, which is going to open up the page um, on my site. Since I'm logged in already, I'm just going to go ahead straight to Edit Page. So again, this issue is that there's the same link text, but those two links have different destinations. So, so from here, I'm going to look at these two links. So over here, I see that this link is going to gms.georgetown.edu. And this next one is still going to gms.georgetown.edu, but you can see there is that HTTPS in front of it. So Site Improve is still going to flag these as different destinations. So all you have to do is go in and edit the page. And just make sure that these links are identical. So I go ahead over here, edit this link, just copy this. And go into this link, make sure that it's the same. And then update the page. And that's that issue result. So I'm going to go back into Site Improve over here. And I'm going to just have Site Improve recheck the page by clicking on that little refresh button. And so that is how you would go about solving accessibility issues in Site Improve. So same process for the different issues. I'm going to go in and show you what it looks like to see the broken links in Site Improve. So I'm going to go back to my main menu, go to Quality Assurance, and then Links. So from here, I like to go to Summary just to see what the status of broken links are on my site, and then kind of figure out how I want to tackle them. So again, you have Pages with Broken Links, which gives you a list of all the pages on your site that have broken links and how many broken links there are on that site. Then over here, if you go to broken links, it'll give you a list of all the broken links that are on your site as well as how many pages those are on. So I'm going to go back to pages with broken links and just show you what this would look like. So over here, 
I see that this page has six broken links. So if I click this little drop down arrow, it'll tell me exactly what those broken links are. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the URL of this page. Site Improve is gonna open up a new tab. It's gonna, again, give me a description of the issue. And it's gonna show me exactly where that broken link is located on my site. So I see that this is one of the broken links that are on this page. So then what I would do is I would go into my uh, site in WordPress. I would go ahead and edit the page. Refer back to this and see where that broken link was located. So the text broadcast email service. I'm gonna go ahead and search for that. So it looks like that broken link is right here. I would determine where I wanted that broken link to go, edit it, put in the updated URL, submit it, update the page, and then go back into Site Improve and recheck that page once I have fixed all the broken links on that page. So that is what a broken link fix would look like in Site Improve. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the spellings are gonna look like. So I'm still going under Quality Assurance. This time I'm just going to go to Spelling. And so if I go to Find the Spelling, I'll see a list of all the misspelled words on my site and how many pages that misspelling is on. And then with pages with misspellings or words to review, I would see a list of pages and how many misspellings or words there are to review on that page. And then decisions on misspellings, just to give you uh, an example of what this would look like. If there have been decisions made on spellings, then the history of them would be right here. It'll show what the word was, um, what the decision was, who it was made by. And if you do find that there was a mistake here, you can undo this decision right here and site improve will again retract um, those misspellings on your site. I'm going to go back to find misspellings over here and just show you what this would look like. Over here I see a misspelling that there is. I'm going to go ahead and click this drop down arrow. Um, if there are again multiple pages, it would list those multiple pages here. I'm going to click on the URL of the page. And then over here on the left, again, it's going to give a lot of descriptions about misspellings, and then it's going to highlight in red where this misspelling is on the site. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this page, which will open up a new tab, um, bringing me to the page where the misspelling was located on. I would edit the page. Refer back and see where that misspelling was. go to where that misspelling is located on this page, and then I can see it right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and update the spelling for that word. Then I'm going to click update, exit out of that page, go back to site improve, and have site improve recheck this page. And that would be how you would fix a misspelling on site improve. All right, now that we've seen how we go about fixing different accessibility issues, broken links, misspellings, and what the policy section of Site Improve looks like, I wanna give you all the opportunity to go ahead into Site Improve, get familiar with it, and try and fix one issue from the above category. So I want you to try and fix one accessibility issue on your site, one broken link issue, and one misspelling on your site. And if you do have any trouble navigating these different sections or have any questions on how to go about fixing these different issues, please feel free to email us at webservices at georgetown.edu. We can help you work through that problem. All right, and so I hope you all were able to resolve one accessibility, one broken link, and one misspelling on your site, and I hope that you are feeling a little bit more comfortable with Site Improve now. So now I wanted to do a review of some of the key points that we talked about. So we talked about how Site Improve can help us track variety of different issues um, that can negatively affect our user's experience on our site. So things like missing alternative text, generic link text, improper headings, broken links, as well as misspellings. So go over these different sections, accessibility section, we talked about prioritizing fixing A and double A level errors because these are the errors that we need to fix in order to be compliant with university policies. We also talked about looking at how many points can be gained from fixing each issue. So if we wanted to rapidly increase our accessibility score, we know where to go to do that. And we also talked about fixing whole pages 
instead of just single issues if we are feeling comfortable fixing a variety of issues. This way, we can make sure that pages that have you know, a bit more traffic are up to university standards. Then we talked about broken links. So we talked about how to fix internal broken links. So again, if this was an issue due to a parent page and you want us to add a redirect, you can go ahead and email us. That way you can save a little bit of time. Talked about looking at context of the page in the paragraph to help us better fix external broken links. And we talked about um, broken links for images and how we should go back into our media library, re-upload that image or use the Georgetown Photo Shelter account to find a replacement image. We talked about misspellings and how we can approve misspelled words if we have certain phrases or abbreviations specific to our department. And then we talked about policies and how they can help us enforce style guides, catch common mistakes, and ensure a consistent experience in regards to the language used on the site, as well as the different blocks. And so I hope you all learned a little bit more about how Site Improve can help you fix different issues um, that you might have on your site. And so now I wanted to bring attention to some upcoming workshops that we're still going to have. We will have one on Advanced Google Analytics as well as SEO. And I would recommend checking out our previous workshops on our documentation site. I also encourage you all to check out those training courses that we have on Site Improve in Canvas if you are looking for more specific information on different issues in Site Improve. And with that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at webservices at georgetown.edu. And thank you for listening.